This is Senate Health and Welfare. It is March 18th and, excuse me, committee. <clears throat> Have a frog, need to get, we like frogs, but not in our throats. Okay, um, so good morning. We're, you know, we had a very uh, uh, long session yesterday with uh, Senate Judiciary and Senate Education in hearing about some of the <clears throat> regulatory events associated with the Kern Hatton School. And I thought, so I thought we'll just spend a few minutes this morning going through and listing some of the questions that we might like to ask um, or some of the open areas for questioning uh, for the DCF related to their investigation or the regulatory authority that they have we may not have a lot at this point. It may have to wait until DCF and others come in, but I thought it might be helpful just to um, get your questions. And I asked Ruth to write some down yesterday as we went through. Um, and the questions that there were some questions that I asked that I think are pretty important. I think actually Ruth identified one of those. So um, what we'll do is <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll just take a couple of minutes to do this. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it uh, because I will be working with uh, the other chairs to establish a, a timeline and some testimony that we'll be taking in committee to help us make further recommendations for improvements. Now, it's really, this is a difficult situation simply because we are not the judge and jury. We're, we're not really taking testimony about the, the historical development of this, but we are interested in how our uh, state administration handled uh, this and also what oversight may or may not have been provided. So, and that, you know, that, that is our job as well. So <clears throat> we have to, um, I think that we should, as going forward, we need to keep all those things in mind. So, um, committee, I'll, uh, I'll I'll open it up and um, ask you uh, for your thoughts. I I did want to um, um, well, I have some questions, but. I guess, why don't I open it up and let you offer your um, your thoughts on questions that you'd like to have answered, uh, who, do, who you think we should be hearing from and the direction we might be taking. Um, I, I value your input on this. Anybody want to start? Maybe Ruth could read the questions that you have so that we know well, I was hoping Ruth would raise her hand. <laughs> um, Go for it, Ruth. Well, I was looking through my notes. The main question I think that I identified in our specific jurisdiction <clears throat> was the the relicensing um, of the um, the treatment of the the uh, residential care facility and whether or not. Um, when they relinquished that license, how it was done and why it was done. Um, and if it was done in order to avoid further oversight or if it was done because violations were found or if it was done um, for other reasons. So sort of like the crux of that because that's the role that DCF plays in terms of oversight of the facility itself. And then there's the other question about the training and reporting of abuse and neglect and whether or not um, that has been done correctly by um, staff at the facility and also whether or not um, it in the past and, and currently and whether or not DCF has responded appropriately to those complaints. So those were the two sort of areas that seemed like in our jurisdiction, there were other questions about AOE's role and judiciary's role, but those were the two that I identified as specific to regulatory oversight in our committee's area. Um, 
there. Yeah, I think that's good. And I think from that, uh, from my, as we identify that, then a whole lot of other questions fall out. So if they were licensed for, to provide treatment services, were adequate treatment services available? So that's under our jurisdiction. Um, what role, if any, does did the district office play in reporting? Because that's also a uh, key. And then <clears throat> the the relicensure every two years, and how were the con the complaints dealt with during the relicensure re process? And and then you know finally it's a two year licensing process and the review is only within the two years so i i guess i might ask the question about cumulative effect so are there little tiny or there are few complaints every two years and are they repeated so those are the kinds of questions i think we want to get at and um and ask uh, among others, but you're, you're hit, that that is our jurisdiction, and we do need to pay attention to it. Um, go ahead, Cheryl. I just was curious to know how long they had had the treatment center, you know, the um, license for the treatment center, and and then it just plays into you know why at this time is it being. Um, not revoked, but uh, not relicensed. Re not relicensed. Yeah. yeah, and um, yeah. So I, I think what you're raising is a good question. It's it's um, characterizing the treatment services that were required. So we we need to understand what exactly were the treatment services required. Right. right. And you said something else that sparked a, a question. But now I can't think of it. Um, District offices. Yep. yep. Uh, cumulative effect. All of those. Excuse me. I'm. Okay. I'm. I'm really sorry, you guys. Um, I just got some really bad news, and I need to leave the committee for now. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Yeah, I'll Hardy. be back when I can. Thank Not you. a problem. Okay. Not a problem. Take care. All right. Oh dear. Uh, a two-year review. Two-year review. Oh, there you go. Yes, the two-year yep. review. Now, isn't the two-year review looking back? I mean, yeah, talking about the two-year review as if it were looking forward, but it isn't. You know what? What are we? What are we looking at when we're yeah. doing those? Yeah, Th that that is the question. You know, if it's only the two years that they're looking at, and. Uh, or how do they how do they deal with that time frame, and how do they deal with prior time frames and prior complaints? And uh, the director had talked about the number of complaints per year, which he said were between six and nine, I believe. Yeah. Um, you know, who do we have uh, documents that? show that you know ha have we seen this how many of them have actually been reported yeah i think i think now everything is on uh, is electronic but um the i we did hear that uh, the there was some flooding in waterbury that did take out much of the you know the paper uh, but we we want to know if district offices still retain records we don't you know so that that the whole record keeping area you're right so probably important okay uh, josh did you want to have anything uh you know to be honest senator lyons and and senator hooker i'll I would defer to you on most of this because unfortunately of as you and Senator Campion know my technology issues we've had the last two days here you okay. sort of impeded me from hearing all of all of yesterday's testimony. So I don't want to jump to any conclusions or ask something that may have already been addressed. So I'd ask you take the lead on this one. All right, good. Well, yeah, and then when you have a chance to review the um the meeting, that would be probably good. 
<clears throat> All right. So I think we're just really trying to understand how uh, the DCF process works in licensure and then how it works with relicensure. And then one of the questions that, uh, that I that I have, um, which I think is important, is it sounds it sounded like the decision to go to closure rather than uh, deregulation, denying the license. And closure meant that there was a mutually agreed upon decision. I'm trying to figure out if the investigation and then the decision making is a negotiated process and what what do our statutes say about that? What do the rules say about that? So is it a negotiated process or is it uh, an inspection um, and then the conclusions drawn and uh, recommendations for licensure or not made? Does that make sense? Am I making sense there? Yeah. Um, okay. You know, why did this, why <clears throat> did, was this allowed to happen, I guess? I mean, rather than DCF going in and doing an inspection and then revoking the license, what, what, where's the authority or where's the um, possibility? How open-ended is it, I guess? Uh, you yeah, know? yeah. 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 You come to an agreement, you know, and yeah. apparently they came to an agreement. Yeah. All right. Okay, I think, and then anything, anything else? I think we're all very concerned about the um, uh, the employees who were at the school, and some of this is going to spill over into what the education committee is doing, and and we'll we'll be involved in that as well, the three of us. But the the idea about background checks and, and how folks are hired and uh, how they're reviewed as employees, all of those things, I think, that spill over into the educational piece, the school piece, rather than the DCF piece. Um, I also had a question about what's happened with the kids that yeah. were in state custody and now where are they and I'm, I'm not sure we got a full answer to that we, but I didn't un understand how many kids were there at that at the time that the license was um, not renewed and yeah I don't remember exactly I think I've written down but I think we can ask that question and then look at the disposition for those kids because they're they are in the guardianship or the care of the state and um, we, we want to understand maybe what needs uh, were there or are there and are they being met? That, that, that takes a step away from uh, Kern Hatton itself, but it does, uh, it does, it's still within the DCF mm -hmm. um, area. Yeah. All right. All right. Anything else? All right. And you know, I, I guess I do have a question, Senator Lyons. Yeah. Like, yeah. Who else are we likely to hear from? And as these um, hearings go on. Well, that that's a good question, and. Uh, we are formulating our uh, with the other chairs uh, because this is a, a three committee process. We're we're working on how to um, build our testimony, but at the same time, you know, work closely to understand the administration's role. So we'll be we'll be doing that. And if you have suggestions for uh, folks you would like to hear from, that you know, send those to me and to Nellie. Uh, and we'll and we'll see what we can do with it. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, my my goal at this point is to focus on the relicensure piece and possible recommendations. Um, obviously, judiciary has its own interests, and judiciary is what may like to work with us more and have some more um, joint meetings. Uh, 
education may or may not. So that's where we are right now and putting to, and we are at this stage putting together um, our next steps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But if you have, if you have <clears throat> recommendations for, for who you'd like to hear from, uh, I'm all for it. I mean, you know, it would sign help significantly. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure we need to hear directly from complainants. We have a lot of information uh, that we can look at, historical data and other information. Okay. From, from kids, I'm just saying, or right. the people who are older now who are out of the school. Okay. All right. And I do know, we also know that the uh, educate, the school investigation through AOE and is, is ongoing. I think it will be very interesting for our committee to look at the results of that investigation. So I'm going to put that on our list. Um, Certainly, the Education Committee will probably be going through it in more detail, but it may help us to understand what um, what the results of that investigation are. And then there's also the New England accreditation process that is is ongoing. And I don't know if we want to stretch ourselves into that area, but certainly we'll see that in education. We do have the, Nellie did put the report, uh, uh, the closure report on our webpage. So we have that. Okay. So my, my suggestion is before we, uh, you know, we might want to go through that, go through that individually. And I might ask for, um, <laughs> my daily dose coming. There go your friends. <laughs> How close? Uh, you you must be pretty close to the airport then, huh? Yeah, I'm not far away. I don't know, five six miles. So so, Senator, you said that Nellie had put the report on our website. Nellie, is that? I'm gonna reach out to Nellie. Uh, is that report on our web page? It was posted for yesterday. I can repost for today if you'd like. Oh, I'm just, who's it under, Nellie? Uh, Jennifer Benedict. Oh, okay. Believe. All right. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you. All right. She's the one, she is the one who responsible for completing the work. And so yep, we'll like definitely hear from her again. We'll, we'll okay. hear from all of the folks who were on the call yesterday, on the Zoom yesterday from DCF. So I think uh, it'd be very helpful to go through that report and that might modify some of the, uh, sharpen some of the questions that we have so we can get, get down to uh, where we need to be in, under, uh, in making improvements to the process should we believe that's necessary. And I'm, I'm thinking that there may be some areas for that to happen. We're also may want to, uh, we may want to ask her to go through that report with us after we've had a chance to look at it. That would be a good idea since it's yeah. a long report and has yeah. a lot of information in it. The other thing is to have Ledge Council, and I believe it will be Katie McClinn, Jen, would it be Katie, uh, to help us understand what the current um, statute says around this? Or would that? I think it depends whether you're looking at um, the licensure piece or the uh, sort of treat, um, child abuse, potential child abuse or neglect aspect. Okay. And then what, what, uh, who would go through the, um, we're talking about the licensure report, the licensure piece itself, all of it. Right, so I think just Katie, reports of child abuse and neglect. 
Um, so Katie would be Katie would work with you, I believe, on licensure issues, DCF licensure issues. Um, although if there's a report from somebody else, I think it would make sense to have whoever wrote the report go through the report with you. Yeah. So I would, yeah, I was thinking of or uh oh. Her first name just escaped me. Uh, the person who uh, was on our call yesterday, Benedict. Jennifer. Jennifer, thank you. I knew it was a J. I was going to call her Jacqueline. Okay, Jennifer Benedict. It's an easy uh, one for me to remember. <laughs> yeah, got it. Popular. Name. Okay, so yeah, so we'll have her come in too. It's uh, after, but I think we do want Katie to go through and share with us a little bit about the licensure procedure as much as she can. There are rules uh, that guide this. So the the issue around rules becomes interesting. And I, so I think the rule, the rules probably are best uh, handled through the Department of Children and Families. So, and I, I will have to ask someone from the department to come in and talk about the rules that are in place. Cause they did talk about changing those rules and i'm i'm curious to know what changes they're going to make and how much uh, and what they are so maybe we can determine how that we should have some influence on the the changes so the rulemaking process is separate from our committee until it gets to the legislative committee on rules and then it goes through the chair so any rule changes would come to, to me and go to Ann Pugh, and then we would say, yes, it is or is not consistent with um, the, the statutes with legislation. So um, before it gets that far, I think we want to know that we've looked at the statute and we've looked at the rules and we've looked at the process. So we have an idea of how uh, those changes are being made and whether we'd like to influence those changes through legislation. Okay. So uh, I think we'll ask uh, Sean Brown and he can uh, provide us with the right person from DCF to go through the rules pro uh, that exist for this, the licensure process. Send us that survey, Senator. <laughs> well, let's see. There just went, I forget how many millions of dollars every time it flies. Two, two more. All the money. It's pretty loud. Okay. Okay. Which, which is why being in the state house makes it a lot easier. One of the reasons. Um, Jen, is there anything else regarding uh, the statutory review or rules that you can think of that would help us as we're going through this? No, I mean, it sounds like you were asking the right questions um, as far as looking into what the licensure, um, what the parameters for the licensure issues are now so that you can understand um, potential changes and also to understand sort of what goes into that licensure process. Um, so I think you're asking good questions that sound like they're designed to get you in more information so that you can make um, decisions about whether there need to be changes in the legislation or through legislation. Yeah, so, so, and, the, so and then one, another question that I think as we, as we dive into the whole area of child abuse and neglect and getting perhaps getting Linda Johnson in because she's uh, her organization works on this all the time, but also uh, DCF folks um, is how, and, and I don't know, maybe, and this is also a Katie question, uh, our definition of child abuse and neglect. So that's going to be a Bryn question. Is that um, a Bryn question? That's a Bryn question. We'll get a Bryn in. We'll yes, have Bryn we in. Do you have statutes specifically on that with definitions, yep. um, that definitions one, included? That one. And then I'd also like to have 
it, who is it Bryn or Katie or you on mandatory reporters? That would be Bryn as well. That's related to the child abuse and neglect. And I think that uh, judiciary is also interest, interested in that. So the, it's sounding like we're, we're building some topics for a joint meeting with them. And I'll take yeah. that to the chair's meeting when we talk together. So it yeah it seems to me uh, we're going to have to we're going to have to consider uh, and and talk first with Bryn on the definition uh, and what's in statute and I'm going to stop talking for a minute please. What's in statute? and then uh, talk with DCF about how talk with DCF about how their uh, rules interpret that statute. I, I, I'm not sure when those rules were written. They may have been updated a few years ago, and I'm not sure how them. I know I do remember when we went through mandatory reporter um, several years ago and added some mandatory reporters into that um, into that statute through Health and Welfare Committee, and I was involved in that. So it, it will be important to have um, Bryn go through that with us. But then to ask DCF how uh, how that fits with um what what's happened at Kern Hatton. So this one get this one really dives down into uh the complaints that we've heard. So we're moving we've just moved from a very a high level of relicensure issues and now we're moving uh slowly down into the very specific and trying to understand the relationship between our statutes, the rules and boots on the ground, what's actually happened. So after Bryn on that, mandatory reporters and abuse and neglect, we're going to have a DCF in to talk about that. So there are, I think, 18 or 20 of these jets, and if they all take off at once or we get more than eight or 10 of them, it takes some time. And then they come back and land when I'm talking on the floor. <laughs> they have good timing. All right, one more and then I'm going to talk. So, Josh, you, you're you're muted. So go for it. I was just going to ask if they if they ever offered to take the senior senator from Chittenden County for a ride. No, but my husband's gone up on the F-16s. I think it was the F-16s or the the ones before. Yeah, he's done that. He did some. Uh, he he talked with uh, with them about um, uh, balance issues as he he's an ear nose throat uh, physician. So he talked with them. About oh, he is. Oh, okay. Ear. Yeah, yeah. All right. That was a, long, a while ago. Okay. Anything else, committee? On uh, is this seems like the appropriate direction for us. I would think. Is there is there anything that we're sort of missing here? And I know that as we hear from the mandatory reporting piece, will also be in in education. It will be in judiciary, and it will be with us. So we'll try to coordinate that's that's the reason for our list so that we can coordinate with other committees about meeting together to uh be more efficient in the use of our time and the time of others and senator despite the fact that the license um has not been renewed for for a residential treatment center there's still the mandatory reporting that goes on um, from the uh, facility to the state whenever yep. there's an, an issue. 
So that so now now that it would be the school teachers and the school counselors who have that responsibility. So I think the reporting goes to the AOE. In the case of DCF, where whether it be um, children in the care of the state, that reporting would go to DCF. Um, I think, and, I, and we'll have to clarify that with Brent yeah, because just, I mean, regardless if it's a if it's a child abuse issue. It should I, go I to where DCF. Going up. That's why I, I, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to have to wait and go back and look at that statute. It, it, I, I'm not clear. I don't remember exactly the, the language in the statute. Um, unless Jen does, uh, we will just, no, I, I know it's not. I will defer to Bryn for that discussion. Yeah. So once we, you know, I think that generally people do not understand that um, once once we write statutes and we ask for rules and we approve the rules, then the work is done by the administration. So, um, but it's important for us to maintain an oversight role. So uh, I guess the question that we have to ask ourselves is um, how frequently are we providing oversight? And once the relicensure has happened those every two years, do we get notice of that? And if we get notice of that, I don't know. I don't think I. I don't think I've ever seen notice of that. Um, and and but we should probably consider whether or not notice of relicensure for any of our organizations might um, suggest some kind of uh, review on our part. Does that make sense? Well, uh, I don't know. A, <laughs> I know. I don't either. I, I, I we're going to have to look at wondering if, if it's just up to DCF to to do the review, and you know, do no, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I think you misinterpreted what I said. But go ahead. No, I'm I'm just wondering. You know, how much of it has to come back to the legislature? Where where does this? You know, how do we? I, I guess it, I guess it would be. Um, a quick email to us, uh, to the chairs of committees that say, uh, this this uh, private institution has been renewed and DCF has uh, relicensed, period. I mean, that, that would be sufficient. And, and I think my big concern is just how much oversight does DCF, is DCF able to do? And how much- Do they have the- Do they have- Have the, the authority to do it? And oh. have they been doing it? I don't- I guess those are the questions you, I have. You mean after they're after the closure piece, after they're no longer no, licensed? No, no. I mean even you know once in, in, with a licensed ah. institution. Yeah. Okay. And how and, many times are they allowed to go in and and do spot checks, investigations, yeah, yeah. respond and, to complaints? You know, yes. Yeah, there good have question. been lots of complaints, and they seem to have been accumulating. Yeah, you know, that's the key. All right. That that's an important question. Okay. All right. So. All right. So I've been yeah. making notes of all of this. I'm going to send it to Bryn and Katie so that um so that they are at least aware of what you're thinking is excellent thanks uh, can ben. you send that to me as well i'll use it <laughs> in um my meet i have it all written i have a lot written down but i'll use it when i meet with the chairs sure um, hopefully i have accurately I have, reflected what well, you well, well i'll you know we'll we'll we'll, we'll always add no question Josh or, or, or Cheryl, uh, Senator Hooker, Senator Terenzini. There's a lot. There is a lot. And I mean, I think, I think our goal is to ensure that whenever children in the care of the state are placed in any facility, that there's, um, there's a positive culture uh, and that, that children are, are well served. Yeah. That, that, that's the goal. We wanna make sure that that happens. 
And especially and so, when, huh? I'd say especially when we're placing children in um, the the private sector. I the mean, private and, sector, yeah. and and so and, and that actually um, that would be a good question to ask: is what's the difference between the public and private sector with all of this? Mm -hmm. What kind of access does DCF yeah. have yeah. and authority to see? Yeah, that's your question. That's very good. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Anything else? No. Nope. Uh, this is a this is a very good um, this is a good start. Um, we need to continue to focus on our role and our responsibilities. Um, and it, 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 we, it could get difficult. But it's interesting because I keep going back and forth with the three of us on education. It's hard yeah. to differentiate, you know, the committee yeah. that it belongs. Well, yeah, you're right. Uh, but when we hear from, when we hear the report that, that's coming to us from AOE, and and then we we start learning about mandatory reporters. It's going to get even worse. <laughs> well, I think but, overall we'll have to hopefully find some something that covers everything. <laughs> I don't know, you know, and that's no, we're, we're, no, certainly it's going to have to be coordinated. You're, yeah. you're, so it's a good thing that we're here together. We don't have anyone from judiciary, but I think we'll be able to meet uh, with them and. Uh, we'll we'll stay stay coordinated. Okay. The the civil and criminal penalty piece is really within the judicial area, but it does link in with how we define um, child abuse and neglect abuse. and how how it is responded to. So there's a there's a there's a flow there from one to the other. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, I'm 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 ready to give ourselves a break until we hear from uh, Commissioner Squirrel, unless there's anything further you'd like to discuss on this issue. Um, Jen, how are you? Uh, just one unrelated update, in case you're not aware. Um, okay. S one seven on S one seventeen. Yeah, I was going to bring that up when we got okay. back together, but I'm happy to do it now. But let's do that when we come back together, because our our minds are not are not there right now. That's fine. Let me yeah, know I when to. Three bills I wanted to talk about. Okay. So yeah, Great. thank you. I'm going to jump over to another up. meeting, but okay. As yeah. long as it's on your radar. We're good. It is, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. And my and and my 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 little hamster has been thinking about how to resolve that issue, but uh, so we'll see how it goes. Anything anything else, committee? Are you are you fine with taking a little break? Good. So we'll we'll we're, we'll take a break here until about uh, ten twenty. Come back a little bit before our uh, Nellie. Is it ten thirty that? Um, we have Commissioner Squirrel. Yes. Oops. Okay, good. Uh, so, okay, so we'll take a break until about 10.20. Uh, in the meantime, Nellie has put um, a bill uh, that we're going to get H210 up on the chat and that Josh, you were interested in that. So we'll, but we're gonna talk about that later. So Nellie, we'll, we'll go. We'll go on break off of YouTube and then we'll come back about 10:20 to complete our work for the day. <laughs>